is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here to um, do a quick video on how to start a ring bound junk journal. Um, so basically, I mean, how I like to start my ring bound journals or, you know, how I like to kind of make my junk journals is to have something quite thick and sturdy for my pages that are going to contain all the different um, embellishment type pieces. And the thing that I have found works really well is to use up some of those 12 by 12 papers that, you know, perhaps we've had for a long time or, you know, you're not so keen on. Um, the ones that I have got here, kind of, that I've done ready to, you know, just just show you, kind of uh, a bit of a example, I guess, of them. Um, all of them tended to be quite patterned on the other side. So, I mean, this one here, and the reason it only opens slightly is because it's kind of glued in the centre, but you can see it's got this pattern on this side. So I probably wouldn't really use that in a junk journal. However, the other side of it was obviously just this kind of mottled pink, which is just perfect for a base, I think, for a page. So any kind of, um, you know, old pages or, you know, old 12 for 12 pads that you have that, you know, you maybe have had for a long time and aren't really likely to use, I just think make an absolutely brilliant base for a page. And what I like to do is basically I'm going to take this one here. Now I'm just going to rise or raise my uh, tripod slightly. I still don't think I can actually fit in the whole 12 by 12 paper, but... This has been coffee dyed. As you can see, it's plain on the back. But all that I will do is basically fold it in half. Like that. And then I like to chop it down to approximately what would be A4 height. So for us in the UK, that's kind of your regular copy size paper, which is, um, I think it's eight and a quarter by 11 and a half or <laughs> to be honest I've now lost track whether I'm on American measurements or or UK but it's around about that so this is my kind of template that I'm using of one that I've already cut down and I just literally snip the top off like that and then this I will obviously keep for making other little pieces and embellishments but all that I then do so I'm just going to kind of squash that side down so it's, you know, really nice and sturdy or really nice and, you know, burnished down. And then I just go over the page just with a little bit of glue, you know, just randomly kind of around about the centre to hold it together because, you know, you don't want it like an empty sort of bag inside like that. And then I can just glue that together, spread it with my glue spreader. So just get my card and spread that out like that. And then what I quite like doing is then stitching around the edge of my pages. So literally going all around four, you know, all four of the sides in just a neutral thread or maybe a black thread or you know you could tie it in with your journals or whatever I mean I will probably do all of these in just a sort of ivory or just off white color and then they're going to be neutral and fine to use in a whole variety of journals so I'll go and do that now okay so I'm back from the sewing machine and you know I've now got a whole bunch of ready or pages you know ready to use in ring bound journals so I've already kind of started one. Now, again, I mean, ring bound journals, they're really versatile. You can obviously kind of change, you know, chop and change how many pages you want in them and things. You can make them really fat, not too many pages. Completely up to you. So, you know, I'm a little bit obsessed with Matchy Matchy, as you know, um, although I am trying to get out of it. So um, I'm going with a sort of bluish themed at the moment. So I'm going to take out all of the pink pages because I probably will not be using those in this particular journal and that's great because I've got these now ready to use for another ring bound journal so I'm just going to keep those to one side and then I thought I must have another one in there um <laughs> and then what I've done if I just pull in a page that I've done already so this is a page that I have done already. I'm kind of partially through it because I haven't obviously finished underneath this envelope, as you can see. 
Um, but I would then probably try and pick some pages that I thought are going to tie in nicely with this journal. So I'm going to go for, I think, these. I could maybe even have one of these like wood grain effect. Um, that's probably a little bit on the dark side. I've got a scripty, scripty looking one. Not sure. Um, well, perhaps I'll just do both of the wood grain ones because then I'm kind of going with the same sort of theme. I'm not 100% sure about those wood grain ones, but definitely, I mean, these paler ones, they are definitely, you know, 100% perfectly fine to be able to use. And then what I can do is obviously start working on them completely, you know, from scratch. Now, I try and always put the folded edge on the outside edge if you see what I mean so oh, struggling to even see this time right so this is the non-folded edge i.e this was where the two papers join I will have that on the inside of the book where the rings will be and then the same with this one if I can actually see yep same again so this is the you know the where the two pieces of paper met so those will be my inside edge papers where I'm going to put my rings and then obviously you can start decorating your papers up so I'm just going to kind of ink around this with the vintage photo because that's going to obviously you know make it look a lot more tied in color wise with the other pages like that yeah I mean I really love doing the ring bound journals I know they're not everybody's cup of tea but I mean, honestly, as um, the journal maker, especially, they're fantastic for making or, you know, to make because you can really go to town with your embellishments and your ephemera and things like that. Because, of course, they can get much bulkier. You don't have a spine that you're going to have to kind of contend with and things like that. Um, but equally, as the journal user they're fantastic because of course as you get you know maybe you've got letters or tickets or you know memorabilia photos and things like that you can of course open the rings up and add in extra things um you know or take out pages you know as kind of um you know your tastes change or perhaps you kind of think oh you know i'm not so keen on that page anymore you can just take the page out um you know or again for a different look you can obviously rearrange the order of the pages and things like that so you know, I think they're really, really sort of under underrated and underused because I think, you know, they have the greatest versatility, definitely, of all of the journals. And honestly, I mean, I absolutely love making them because I just think they're the most, the most fun, the most fun to make. And, you know, I quite like making mine as like individual pages like this. And then when you come to bring them all together, that's also really fun because you can then be you know, kind of selecting which pages look nicest together and things like that. You know, you've really got a lot of options that you don't necessarily have when you're working with, you know, a stitched in journal where you've got to be mindful of how big it's getting, how chunky it's getting, you know, and all of those kinds of issues. So, yeah, for me, I really, really like this, um, this style of journal. So that's kind of going to be the foundation of my pages. Now, there are obviously other things that you can use for pages. So we'll just kind of have a look at a couple of other sort of options. So another option here, again, using your 12 by 12 sheets that you maybe aren't going to be using anymore. So again, I've got this one. I mean, it's super pretty, but I'm just probably not really likely to use this in my journals. Now, this is a much thinner page. I don't know what the GSM is of these papers, but these are quite thick. Um, you know, they're definitely verging on more card type um, thickness. And this one is much, much thinner. But what you could do with this, again, just doing exactly the same as I did with the others. So fold it over and again, just kind of cut it down to the sort of size that you want it to be. So we'll just again use that as a guide. And again, I'm just going to kind of glue this in together. You know, really don't need too, too much glue because we're going to again stitch around the edges of this. 
but you just you know you don't want that kind of bubble in the middle where it's not kind of stuck together at all I guess is you know what we're trying to kind of avoid happening so just to you know not too much glue like that and we'll just spread that now like that So although, you know, this is folded over, it's still quite flimsy compared to my other pages. But what you could now do is collage up some pages to use as your background papers. So I've just pulled in my sort of scraps bin from the side of me and we can just get collaging up some of our pages. I might need to just unclog my glue a little bit because it's a little bit kind of clogged, I think. Uh, yeah. hopefully it's going to be a bit better now because obviously once you've stuck on your collage pieces that's going to you know um what's the word increase the weight of your paper so that your paper is therefore you know much more robust and um heavier duty <laughs> heavier duty to take all the lovely embellishments and things that you can then stick onto your page so you can just collage around it And again, you know, that way you can obviously tie it in colour-wise with your other pieces in your journal. So, I mean, actually, I don't know as this is going to be very in-keeping, so I might not use that. But got some sheet music here. I'll just pop that one down there. Yeah, I'm going to have to just pop a pin in here to properly unclog it, I think. Okay. Like that. So, I mean, you know, both of these types of things are quite ideal to do just, you know, during the evening whilst you're watching TV. You could just take a stack of your older 12 by 12 sheets that you don't really like. And you could either just kind of cut them down to size and glue them ready for stitching like the next day, as we did with the, you know, the pages just now. Or you could take your more flimsy papers that you're not so keen on and then just sit and collage a little bit and, you know, build them up that way. And then, you know, you've just got then some nice bits to, to use as your pages straight away. Just go all around. And, you know, I mean, I guess you could do this as a, um, you know, a full sheet before folding it. I don't know really why, you know, why I chose to fold it first. But, you know, I'm sure both methods would work absolutely fine. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. I mean, you might get a bit of cracking and things if you went to fold it after collaging. So I guess that's just something to kind of bear in mind if you're doing it, you know, first before covering or before folding. So we're just then, oops. Oh, I keep on mucking about with this and it just keeps on being, um, you know, skew if and not, not skew if, upside down. Not that I would even know, obviously, with sheet music, except this has got words on it which obviously gives the game away, even to me. Okie dokie. So, just like that. Okay, and... Just seeing what else I've got that's a kind of neutrally neutrally piece that isn't going to just you know make it clash completely with what else is going to be going in my journal oh i've got this lovely paper isn't that gorgeous the problem is i'm not going to then want to actually cover this up I'm just going to put this on the other side so yeah let's just stick that down perhaps i'll, perhaps I'll tear this off because that's just like not not great is it being that shape okay 
This is some old um, scrapbook paper that obviously I've had in my hoards for the longest time. It's lovely. I couldn't even tell you where this came from, to be perfectly honest, what paper pack this was from. Um, but it's, it's quite old. I've had it for a long, long time. Okie dokie. So brilliant way to use up some of your scraps and also to use up some of those 12 by 12 papers that obviously, you know, you might otherwise not really ever get round to using. And, you know, makes your journal completely unique because, of course, you've got things that, you know, nobody else is going to possibly have in their journals. So, um, you know, that's another sort of good thing. Just have that. Ooh. See, I'm now just overthinking this and it's it's now just going downhill from this point forward, probably. And that's a little bit yellow, but that's fine. Okay. my blue one on the edge okay. and obviously when I trim this down in a minute this will all neaten up and you know it will have a more cohesive look it's not going to look really <laughs> as rubbish as it looks now well it might do but hopefully hopefully it's not going to look as rubbish as it looks now You never can tell, can you? So, uh, yeah, I might be surprised and find it does still look that rubbish. But fingers crossed it's going to then come together and look look nice. Uh, oh, I've got some more of this. The problem is, if I put it there, that's just going to be covered up, really. Oh, well. Let's just put that there. I mean, it's seen better days, this scrap. It's obviously been buried somewhere I might have even got it when I did under the floor under my desk not under the floor under my desk on the floor well that would really be um going for it in the tidy Fridays wouldn't it if I was actually going under the floor <laughs> that would be a whole new type of video wouldn't it house renovations okay and I've just got a little scrap here of some sheet music just put that down actually I might put that there because it would just fit in that space and you want to get kind of as close to the edge as you can with the glue but you know don't worry too much because we are going to stitch around this but equally you know these are paper so they're going to be flimsy and if you don't get close enough they're going to kind of you know be just susceptible to catching and things really. So that one there. Okay. What else have I got in this box? Honestly, I'm needing to do another another purge session on this box. Honestly, those scraps just really mount up so quickly and I'm really trying to be good and, you know, keep on top of them. But my goodness, they need a lot of, um, a lot of purging. You know, it literally seems like every few days I'm having to work with my scraps again, but it's probably not as frequent as that, but it certainly feels very frequent. But I'm trying to be good and, you know, keep on top of them and not let them build up too much. I think that's the only thing that you can do, really, is to try and try and whittle them down every time that they get in a little bit kind of crazy. A little bit out of hand is just kind of whittle them down a bit, you know, to try and stay on top of them. Okay. 
Nearly there. Did I leave a gap on the middle of the other side? I can't remember now whether I did. I might have to go back to the other side because I might have left a big, big space on the other side. I can't remember now. And again, you know, this is going to obviously transform once it's inked because it will then, you know, hopefully blend in much better with the other pages. So um, if you're thinking, well, that doesn't look very good so far, it will hopefully look better once it's all been inked up. I'm sure I've probably got loads of other scraps laying around on the desk that would be just perfect for this, but... Oh well, I'll just go for this neutral, neutral theme that I've got going here. Get some more sheet music. It's kind of different shade. It's just looking to see if I had anything blue in here at all, because blue would look quite good, but oh well. Right. Perhaps I'll just finish it off by just having this here. Probably not with that big bit of sellotape. I mean, I quite like the sellotape, but it kind of dominates it a bit too much. So let's just pop this one down. Just trying to be, you know, a little bit quick. And, you know, you really don't have to worry too much about your collage on this type of thing. Because, of course, you know, you're going to be covering it up with all the bits that you're going to be sticking onto the page itself. And this obviously is going to be the page itself. Um, you know, this is just really your foundation base of your page. So yeah, you don't have to kind of worry too much about how it looks because, you know, you're not really going to see very much of it once it's finished. Okay, oops, I'm going to tear that down because I don't want that big straight edge with nothing on it. Oh, I might prefer it that way up. I know, really didn't make a lot of difference. There wasn't really much difference between the the front and the back, but somehow it just looked like it did just, did just have a bit more going on on there. Let's just stick that down. Okay. There we go. So I'm just going to trim this up now. along the bottom like that and then probably easiest to do it from this side for this edge like that okay so then again all I'm going to do is just take this across to the sewing machine and stitch all around the edge just exactly as we did with the other pieces so I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I'm back from the sewing machine and, you know, hopefully you can kind of see now. So it's just been stitched around the edge just exactly as we did on the bigger 12 by 12 sheets. And then again, you know, once I've inked this up, it's hopefully going to kind of marry in with the other pages much better. I mean, obviously the other ones have been coffee dyed. This one hasn't, but... Hopefully the vintage photo is going to work its magic and just kind of bring it in together like this. And again, you know, you don't have to be kind of too fussy because obviously a lot of this is going to be covered up by all your bits that you're going to be putting onto the page. But you just want to get it, you know, so it's looking sort of similar colour at least to the, the other pages, you know, in the sort of foundation Stages. So, I mean, if you can just see there, I mean, they're now a really good match, aren't they? So, I'll just do exactly the same on the back. And obviously now, you know, thickness-wise, this is now nice and sturdy to hold, you know, pockets and tags and things like that, where obviously previously, 
it was just obviously this, you know, this flimsy piece of scrapbook paper and that wouldn't hold anything, you know. But now you've got a nice sturdy page for all of your pieces to be stuck on. So you just want to think really, I, I think, about how you're going to do your pages and what you're going to use. I mean, I have also sometimes used um, stacked book pages, um, you know, a little clump of book pages, stitch them together. They work quite nicely too. But this, I think, is my favourite. I think it's probably the quickest um, to get your, you know, your base pages. And I just think it's, you know, a brilliant way of using up those papers that you might not use. So that's another page there. And then another option that you can use is you can obviously use some of your envelopes. So I've got this envelope here, which is, you know, it's a sort of business um, envelope. And as you can see, I mean, I would have called this A5, but it's probably, I don't know what size this class has, but it's bigger than my, um, what do you call these? You know, my pages that I've just made. So what I would do here is obviously try and make this now smaller. And what I would probably do is try and keep this as a pocket. So I'm going to trim in here a bit like that. And then we can just fold this down across the top where I just snipped it. And actually we could fold that inwards, to be honest, probably is tidier. So let's just fold that, oops, fold that in. Oh, this is super fiddly for me. <laughs> Might not be so fiddly for everyone, but for me this feels very fiddly indeed. So, yep, oh my gosh. Wow, super fiddly. Okay, so that's your top of your pocket. And obviously by doubling that over, again, you've just strengthened your, you know, your top edge, which is quite a good thing to do. I mean, you could now have this as a foldy, foldy flap for your page, if you see what I mean. Um, the only thing is this envelope is obviously a little bit on the wide side. So what you're going to want to do is obviously bring this in. So again, what I'm going to do, I think, is fold it in roughly where it needs to be and actually I'm going to go on this side so the non-folded edge I've got a folded edge here I'm going to go on the non-folded edge and I'm going to just bring it in to approximately where it needs to fold down like that and then all you're going to want to do is basically trim off this section here. So again, slightly tricky, but go down the edge. Actually, it's probably easiest if you open it. Trim down the edge like this. Oops, like that. Okay. And then you're going to trim off this part so the inside part i hope this is making sense the inside part where you folded it like that okay and then all you're going to want to do up here is basically you're going to cut off here like that in level with the you know where it's kind of folding down if you see what I mean and then to make your flap so that this is the same shape on both sides you can just fold it slightly like that to meet one another and then just kind of shape your flap so it's the same on each side I hope that made sense. It felt confusing when I was saying it, but <laughs> hopefully it did make sense, you know, watching. And that would be then your envelope. And then that's obviously, that's the same size as those pages. So what I would probably do now is because, you know, I don't want that flap obviously in green, you know, I don't think that looks all that attractive. So I'm going to fold this flap down. This is that, that flap. 
hope this makes sense. I don't know what you call these different flaps. I'm just having to call them this and that. <laughs> this and that. But hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to glue this down. This is my inner, my inner flap. Okay, so I'm just going to glue that down along there, like that. And then all I'm going to do is take, let's just see what I've got here. This book page might not be wide enough. No, I didn't think it was going to be. So I'm going to probably take sheet music because that's wider. Yeah, okay. Now, do I want to be like this or do I want to be like this? Or like that. Oh, choices. Too many choices here. I uh, wonder if I've got a bit without without the title. Okay, here we go. Let's try this one. Ah, okay. So this is better. So I'm just going to trim it down here at this edge. Like that. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is... I'm going to fold it here so as I know roughly where to cut it. Like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to cut that down. And, you know, these are just options for different page types. You don't have to include all of these different page types. You don't even have to do your pages this way at all. Um, these are just some options that, you know, I think are quite nice to use, um, you know, uh, just to give you, yeah, some different kind of page, page options, really. So all I'm going to do is glue that sheet music in there like that. So again, what I'm going to do is just take my glue around the edge of that envelope flap like that, like that lots there on that sort of crease where it's going to crease there and fold and then I'm going to just take some actually I think I prefer it that way yeah after all that I think I prefer it oops nearly glued it the wrong way I think I prefer it this way so again I'm just then going to apply the glue here direct to the sheet music pop a bit more on there Okay, and then we're going to just glue that in to there. Oops, like that. Okay, and you can obviously then spread that with your glue spreader. Like that. And then you can just go around the other side, trim that up. in line with your flap, okay, and like that. If you've got anywhere hanging out, like there, I just had a bit of green showing, you can obviously just trim that, trim that off, just so you can't see it anymore. And then obviously you can then glue your your folded piece here you can glue down onto the side so again let me just press that down like that I might just need to take this down just like literally not even a millimeter but it just was kind of overhanging slightly so I'm just going to take this down as well because I've just got a little bit there that's kind of causing a problem. Okay, right. So then you're just going to glue all of this down. So I've got that little triangle there. I'll just include that. And then just go along there, gluing the whole thing down. Like that. And, you know, I mean, you can probably see I have not cut that very straight. It doesn't matter because that's going to be covered up, you know, once we 
get decorating that won't be visible anyway but that's just kind of a quick way to obviously shrink your envelope down so it's now the identical size basically to the rest of your pages and then of course I mean again I probably shouldn't really bend this whilst it's still drying but because I'm doing a video I will so again let me just trim that off because I still had a little bit of green showing and then of course your envelope flap you can just fold down like that and you know when I come to actually decorate this the chance are I'm going to then cover this envelope flap with some other paper as well but that's then like that so again when this then is in your journal what you're going to do is have your holes in your pages here and you'd have you know your big pockets here and then you can obviously decorate this side up as well so just a few little ideas there obviously for you know how to start your ring bound journals and you know to make as your page bases um, with regards to punching the holes, again, no rules really. Sometimes I might punch them, you know, first, sometimes a bit later. Um, you know, completely doesn't really matter. Just kind of please yourself. Um, but obviously what you do want to do is make sure that all your holes are in the right or the same places for all of your pages. So when I punch them, well, I'll, I'll punch some now to kind of demonstrate. I just want to check I've got those inside bits yep where I where I said just now and I just take my cropper dial and I just stack a couple of pages together now obviously you can see I mean my pages now are not really necessarily the same size my collage page is slightly bigger than this page again that doesn't really matter you know it's it's hardly any change at all and you know it really isn't going to be a big issue if they're slightly different sizes um and then all I'm going to do, so I'm going to move this so that when I'm doing my pages, hopefully it's in roughly the same size, uh, the same place. And then I'm going to put them together. Right, that might be a little bit far in. So again, let's just move that up a bit. Again, just check they're stacked. And, and you know, completely up to you. I'm just going to have two rings. That still might be in a little bit far. Um, I'm just going to have two rings to hold this together. I'm going to use those giant book rings, which they're linked below in the video description in my Amazon affiliate links. I, I Well, I was going to say I think they're one and a half inch book rings, but actually I wouldn't swear by that. So you might have to check down below. But you're just going to buy, you know, I, I anyway, buy I just go roughly where you might want to have your holes punched. And then again, judging by eye, I go in roughly the same sort of distance along from the top, like that. So you've got then your holes for your, your ring bound journal. And then all I'm going to do is obviously when I come to do the other pages, I will just take one of these to act as a template and just line it up with my, my other page. I'll just have to poke that little little sort of glut of paper out oops like that and we can just then punch that in I mean you might want to at this point sort of hold this with like a bulldog clip or you know a peg or something oh my bulldog clip's really stiff I'm going to struggle to use that so I'm just going to use a peg here and you can just go in and obviously then Punch the holes for the rest of your journal. Like that. Okay, and you would then do that for all of your pages. Um, again, you know, like I say, sometimes I punch the holes first, sometimes I punch them sort of more into decorating. You know, I don't think it really matters. I mean, obviously, sometimes you may have to re-punch the holes because you might have stuck things over the top of the holes, if that makes sense. Um, but I mean, sometimes it's handy to have the holes there because then you know that if you're putting something, say that's an opening thing, you need to avoid the holes because otherwise your opening piece is not going to actually open, if that makes sense. So, you know, just play around and find what works best for you. Like I say, I mean, sometimes I vary it. So it's not a kind of 
this is how I always do it situation. Um, but yeah, just kind of play around. And, um, you know, the most important thing really is that all your holes are then in the same place. So I hope that that's given you some ideas of, you know, how to get started with your ring bound journal. And hopefully I will come back and we can do a couple of page layouts and decorate a couple of, um, you know, page layouts together. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I hope that um, giving you some ideas and helps you use up some of your 12 by 12 papers and things like that. So thank you so much and hopefully see you guys soon. Thanks then. Bye.